Sasaki Izaburo, the commander of the Mimurogumi, and a man who wanted to bring a new era to Edo, one without samurai. As the world he wished to create was a peaceful one, where no one would ever need to pick up a sword again, and so that is what we shall discuss today. If you find yourself entertained at any point during the video, then consider liking, subscribing and ringing that bell, as I cannot explain to you how much such a small action can do for this channel. Also, if you want to go the extra mile and support this channel even further, then consider pledging to my Patreon. Anyway, on with the video. Izaburo was born into an elite family and due to the class that came with his family name, he was easily able to achieve a position within the government. He had a wife he loved and a daughter on the way when he witnessed the formation of the Roshigumi, soon to become the Shinshingumi. However, this was when his life took a change, as this was the moment when he began to understand what it meant to be a samurai. As despite coming from a poor background, despite not being elite like himself, Izaburo thought that their natures were more true to the idea of a samurai than his own. And so Izaburo the elite grew to respect the man who would later become the Shinshingumi's commander, Kondo Izayo as this is where he came to understand the true worth of a man beyond their class and standing in society. However, the Shinshingumi wouldn't be around for long as on their first mission, they were planned to fail and then take responsibility by committing seppuku. And Izaburo knowing this, just couldn't let it happen. He couldn't let the true samurai he saw be killed in such a way, let alone by such innocent children. So he foiled the plan and as such earned the wrath of the Naraku. As punishment, they sent the assassin that Izaburo had already met, Mukuro, to kill his wife and daughter, and the assassination succeeded. Izaburo's wife and his child died, and to make it even more bitter, just before it happened, Izaburo finally came up with the name to call his firstborn child. He sent a message containing that name to his wife, but it never was received. The name he wanted to call his daughter was Nobume, meaning trust, as if she grew up healthy, he could trust her for the rest. And well, as you can all see, the irony is that she didn't grow up healthy, she died when she had just been born. Izaburo's text didn't make it to his wife before she passed, and his feelings, the feelings he placed within that name when he picked it, didn't make it to his daughter either. He lost them both and could never let his messages be heard. As that's the issue with text messages, just because you send them, just because you let your feelings loose, doesn't mean the message will be received and that your feelings will be heard. As one would expect when Izaburo saw Mukuro standing over the corpses of his wife and daughter, he ran to kill her. But he wasn't a dumb man and the evidence was clear as day. She didn't kill his family, no, she tried to protect them. It was so clear that even if he wanted to just ignore it and kill her, to just let out his anger, he couldn't. So instead he made a vow, a vow to create a new world. And then with his goal set, he tasked the young girl on the other side of his sword with a simple mission, to kill him once he achieved his goal and punish him for not being able to protect the two most precious to him. He trusted her so much with this mission that he even gave her a new name, a name that meant trust, he called her Nobume. He dragged her into this quest for revenge, even when he knew deep down that she had been trying to protect the things he cherished. As that day, both of them lost everything. Izaro lost his family, and Mukuro lost her home with an Araku. They were both alone. Izaro even considered himself to have died, and so he deleted all the contacts in his contacts list, as a dead man doesn't have anything to protect, no connections to cherish. However, the one name he could never delete was Nobume, the name of his daughter, and name of his only companion. Even if the two of them were alone and had nothing left to protect, that wasn't technically true, as they both still had one tiny sliver of a thing to protect, and both were scared of being alone. All Izaro wanted was to have someone by his side, even if it was his enemy, and Nobume wanted the same. Even if it was as an enemy, she wanted to stand by his side. Two souls who lost everything with only themselves as company. It's genuinely tragic. However, there is always a sunrise to come, no matter how deep into the night you may be. Izaburo due to Nobume was finally able to succeed at protecting the things precious to him, and Nobume due to Izaburo was finally able to care for someone else. Izaburo's goal was to create a new era, a new world of peace, a world where children were assassins, where you didn't need to worry about protecting your family. As Izaburo was unable to protect his own family, and so never wants such a tragedy to happen again, not to anyone. The reason Izaburo wants an end to the era of samurai, and is to an extent associated with anti-samurai ideals, is all in service of this dream. As what the samurai do, they protect what they cherish. The reason they brandish a sword is in service of protecting. But the world Izaro wants to create is one where there is no need to fight to protect what you cherish. A world where you don't need to carry a sword as you should have no fear of what you cherish being taken away. Samurai are the ultimate symbol of protection. So a world where they are no longer needed would be a paradise of peace. Now whether Izaro's dream is too lofty or is too unrealistic is besides the point as I don't think Izaburo ever truly thought he could create such a world, 
What he did believe is that he could pave a way for a better world, a future slightly better than the present. And so he made the samurai revolt. He orchestrated it so that the rotten country would fall, so that rebellion would occur. The country would fall away along with the era of samurai and leave a fresh slate for the new era to begin. And this is the reason I believe he uses a gun alongside his sword, as he is stepping forward away from the time of the samurai and swords, towards the modern age represented by the weapons of the future, firearms. But by still hanging onto the sword it shows that he himself will never reach that new world and can only act as a bridge to it. He is happy to be a stepping stone for the new era, he is happy to die for it as he knows there are better men than him. He knows that despite being elite, his life really is of little worth and he knows that he is already a dead man. The Shogun assassination arc as a whole represents the ending of an era, with the death of Shigishigi, the end of the Shinshingumi, and the past between Gintoki and Takasugi being left in the past. And so the farewell Shinshingumi arc symbolises the beginning of the new era. And well, who is one of the most major players in this arc? It's Azaburo. And by dying at the end of the arc, he helps pave the way to a new future. By dying, he ensures the Edo police force unites as one under Nobume and goes on to protect not just those in need or to punish those who did wrong, but instead to protect everyone and create a peaceful world. Besides Nobume, there are a few other characters to which Izaburo has a relationship. He worked under Nobunobu in hopes of sparking rebellion and creating his new world, and respected Kondo to the extent he considered him a true samurai. But this also came with a sense of envy, to the point he felt happy to finally win against Kondo by momentarily killing him in the Fell Shinsengumi arc. However, the most important of his relationships besides Nobume is of course his half-brother, Tetsunosuke. Tetsunosuke, unlike Izaburo, wasn't born in the upper class. For this, Izaburo looked down on him, but since we know how much Izaburo came to respect the Shinshingumi, despite their lower class, there is obviously more to it. In my personal opinion, I do think Izaburo once cared for his brother. However, when his family died and he considered himself dead, he didn't bother to care anymore. A dead man has nothing to protect and no self to uphold. He tried to act like a samurai inspired by Kondo, he did what he thought was the right thing, but it just got his family killed. So after that incident, he no longer cared to uphold those ideals that had hold up in his heart. He lived in service of his goal, waiting for Nobume to end his life for good, and spared no thoughts to his brother, a person of low worth. If not for the death of his family, Izaburo may have grown to become a truly great samurai. However, the righteous ideals he adopted were quickly squashed. The newfound belief he gained that the lower class could be greater than him, the righteousness should be pursued, died along with his family. He became cold and dead afterwards with no compassion left. Nobume was enough to keep his cold heart from stopping, so he had no use for anything or anyone else. So it wasn't that he hated his brother, he just no longer felt anything for anyone. Only during the farewell Shinshingumi arc, when he was inspired by the words of Kondo, of the man who had once earned his respect and then touched by the feelings of Nobume, did Izaburo begin to feel once again. However, by that point it was too late. Even if he was on the road to regaining the ideals he lost years ago and becoming the man he wished to be before his wife's death, his time was short. He died with the old era as a stepping stone for the surviving to make it to the new era. He sacrificed his body to literally push Nobume and Tetsunosuke towards the future. Just as he learned to feel again, just as he was able to start to connect to his brother again, it all ended. However, as he died, his message was finally sent, in so many ways. He rushed to his wife's side, acting the part of the samurai, and by saving others with his death by protecting others, he became that samurai he once desired to be. The love he wanted to convey to his daughter, to Nobume, finally was properly delivered as Nobume cried her eyes out, showing to him just how much she loved him, and lastly, by dying he would once more meet his wife and finally be able to tell her face to face what she means to him. Izaburo's death is one of the greatest moments in the entire series to me, as it symbolises so much. However, in Kintama, death isn't the end. Even once your heart stops and your body decays away, as long as people remember you, as long as people let you live on through their actions, then you will never ever truly die. And this is true for Izaburo, as Nobume carried his soul alongside the road to the new era. Nobume, with her friend's soul by her side, created a new era, something shown beautifully in Gintama the final. Izaburo, to me, demonstrates something quite profound. That even if you lose everything, even one connection can keep you going. That even if you lose your feelings and your ideals, even if you throw them away, they will never die. You can always claim back your past feelings no matter how much time passes, and even if they are dead, your feelings will always reach the people you love, as no message will ever go unreceived. Comment of the week comes from Hyde HG, and thank you for the support. If you're interested in my literary endeavours, then why not check out my books Gang Fluid Justice and People of Fate Volume 1, available at Amazon.com. 
And if you want to go the extra mile in supporting this channel, then consider pledging to my Patreon, where for as little as £2.75 a month, you can get your name at the end of the video, like Ikari Desu, 7SO, and Smoker McBobby. So with all that said and done, I've been Seth the Sin, the Deadly Sin of Geek, and I'm signing out. Stay safe, everyone.